Hey everybody, how's it going? <clears throat> hey everybody, how's it going? Let me know if you're here. Hey, good morning, good morning. Somebody can pop in the chat that they're here. I'm going to do something a little different today. It's a very, very rainy, rainy Tuesday morning here in Atlanta, Georgia. <clears throat> and it just made me think that maybe we need to do something a little bit different today. Plus, I've personally had just a crazy last couple of weeks. And it helps me to do some meditations every single day just to kind of reclaim my mental sanity and just kind of bring everything really, really down. So I'm going to do something different today and, and just kind of guide you through a little five minute or so meditation before my talk. If somebody could just say, hey, or hashtag live, if you're here live, and then a hashtag replay, if you're coming in on the replay, I'd love to see where people are from and answer any questions that you might have. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my meditation because that's going to take about five minutes, like I said. Hey, hashtag live Michelle. All right, how are you doing, girl? Feeling a little better today. So my meditation I'm going to do with y'all this morning is about five minutes long, and I'm going to set it to some music. So I'm going to pull up some music, and we're going to uh, not deal with my cat here. Tell me if y'all can hear this music. <clears throat> I just want everybody to get into a position and close their eyes. Take a couple deep breaths in and out through their mouth. And just really feel comfortable in your seat. Coming into your body, feeling present. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel the seat underneath your legs. And just take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and calm your nervous system. All the different practices I'm gonna be going through with y'all, they're gonna each work in and of themselves, but as you do them together and we practice this more, we're gonna get better and better at having these meditations and the calming of our nervous systems available to us at a moment's notice. So just observe whatever it is that you're feeling and give yourself time to feel that this morning. And on the one hand, having this objectivity, this consciousness beside you, and on the other hand, having availability coming towards you and grace coming towards you. Once availability and objective, objectivity open, they're available to you as you experience your emotions. When you go in and feel and explore these negatives, the negative feeling will start to reverse back to its basic building blocks. It'll turn back into nothing. It's just energy. And when you become less attached to it, it doesn't have the control over you as this consciousness, as our thoughts, they are just something that we do. They are not who we are. For those just coming in right now, we're doing a meditation. You can just close your eyes, listen to the music and listen to the sound of my voice. I'm walking you through releasing emotions. So just observe the emotions that you're feeling so much that it becomes neutral and give it permission to move through your body. And again, the more you practice, the more efficient you will become until eventually you'll be able to dissolve a feeling within a few minutes. But first you've got to practice and you've got to sit with your emotions. Don't stuff them down. Sit with them for however long they need and then go back to it. You may have to go back to it time and time again but these layers will dissolve. And the more they dissolve, 
the less and less you will be associated to the identity of these feelings, of the emotions, and of the thoughts. Know that your subconscious has been aware of all the times that you've had these feelings, and whatever comes up, let it come up. And when you're ready, you can let that go. Trusting the safeguards of yourself, feel into that feeling. Feel into the feeling of what it would feel like to let it move through your body and breathe into it. Fill it up with this availability and willingness and consciousness and objectivity. Aware of being aware, breathing through it, just observing, just paying attention, paying attention and observing that emotion. Observe the observation and feel that release and let that dissolve more and more. And if it helps you, you can try and gauge how much of that release on a scale of one to 10. And as you practice this, you can watch that number go down and down. And eventually with practice, you can get it down to a zero. Conscious of being conscious. So for now, just let go of whatever was left and simply allow it to dissipate and just choose to focus on something else entirely. Hopefully my live coming up right here. However you choose to feel, it could be joy, happiness, pride, but feel that Feel into that for no excuse, for no reason. Just feel joy. And even if it feels incongruent, still feel it and put a smile on your face. It may not feel congruent right now, but force yourself to do it. Put a smile on your face. The bigger, the better. And really feel into that and get your body into a state of what it would be like if your body was joyful and then imagine that every single one of your cells is smiling imagine that every one of the trillions of cells that you're composed of has a smile emoji on it a big bright yellow smile and imagine that you can just amplify that by 100 and imagine what it would feel like to be twice as joyful or 10 times as joyful, what would it feel like to be 100 times as joyful? Your willingness to feel the joy and whatever you <laughs> liberate from that, whatever your percentage is, big or small, whatever that energy is, just feel into that. And you now have programmed that energy with this joy and it is available to you just by having the willingness to feel it. Just know that it is imprinting into your brain now unto all of the autonomous processes that you have, that joy, and it is available to you. Feel into it. Then take a few deep breaths and start coming back into the room, knowing that joy is just at the tip of your fingertips and that it's just a choice. Come back to this practice often, and as you do, you will get better and better. These emotions and thoughts will come less and less. Not who you are and the awareness that it's just what you do. And then you can detach from them with love and patience. So how was that for everybody? I said it would take five minutes. It's been nine minutes. Whoops. I needed that this morning. And before I give my lives every day, I ask God, tell me what you need. What do you need me to say to your people? And I'll just say it. And so to me, I got a message that everybody was having a lot of stress between everything going on in the world. And so I just wanted to help all of us just decrease our emotions down. So I'll put in the comments um, at nine minutes, 35 seconds, come into the live. So, hey, everybody, I'm Dr. Cindy Stark. Welcome to my Tuesdays at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
a series of lives that I'm doing, hopefully for here as long as I have a voice in my throat and breath in my life, breath and life in my body. And I'm here to talk to you guys today about triggers and how to release them and how they're ruining our lives. So again, um, if you're coming in live, just put a hashtag live. And if you're coming in on the replay, hit hashtag replay and uh, write any questions that you have. And I will do my best to answer every single question that you have. So I have been helping people heal their subconscious mind and their childhood traumas for about two years now. And it is my passion and my goal in life to help end childhood trauma one life at a time. And I've developed a program, a 12 week transformational program. And um, we'll put a comment, uh, a link in one of the comments below later to see if you think you might be ready to get healing once and for all. And we use a variety of tools. And one of the biggest things that we do in my program is that we rewire, try to say that fast a few times, we rewire your subconscious mind and uh, get rid of all the trash and the gunk that's in our filters, messing up with the way that we see our lives as it, as it, it looks to us like it's real life, but it's really a, um, a, a distorted view of reality. So trauma and triggers are the number one things that are screwing up your life and they make you um, undergo these behaviors that make you not, uh, I would say, not at your brightest shining moment, you know. Sometimes we have behaviors that we do uh, over and over again and we don't know why we do those and a lot of them is because our subconscious mind is running on these triggers that we don't even know are there. And so what I want you to remember, and again, you can go back to my uh, first live, um, they're in the announcement sections of this group. Um, hey, Abby. But it's on gestalts and their reticular activating system and how that is our filtration and filing system for all the memories and all the emotions that we have. And it, it actually uh, creates a lens through which we see our life through. And you can recreate the same trauma that you experience as a child over and over again unintentionally just because the only thing that our um, eyes and our frontal lobe, our thinking brain actually sees is the distorted view of reality from way back here that got um, sealed in place probably um, 95 percent of it sealed in place by the time we were seven so it's not your fault if you're doing things over and over again that you don't really uh, like and that it's not your um, ideal life you're you're operating from something that no one really takes the time to look at and that's called your reticular activating system and that's what i have um gotten certified in a method to to clear that so that we see life uh, for what it really is and we learn to trust our voice and we learn to trust ourselves and it's just a wonderful thing so anyway I'm getting off off track here as I always do I'm sorry anyway I want you to think about a trigger let's think about a good trigger uh, one of mine is um, smelling if, if I'm ever on vacation and I'm going down uh, down the street and there is some hot popcorn getting made somewhere you know those places that have all those different flavors of popcorn well that reminds me of this awesome time when i was a kid we spent a lot of time um making popcorn on the stove you know where you shook it by hand you know and you had you did a little three test popcorn pop popcorn kernels and then you you uh, melted a stick of butter and lots of salt and that just reminds me the minute i smell popcorn it makes me think of my mom and dad's love in my childhood home and watching movies with my friends or my cousins. I was so blessed. I had um, 10 cousins. I think we had 10 cousins about my same age. And so it's like I had, instead of two siblings, I had 12 siblings. And so it was just uh, the best childhood ever. And I just remember popcorn equals family love. And the way that our um, subconscious mind works is through our five senses. So anything that you see or taste or smell and anything that you hear or feel, that's how you can, your subconscious mind uh, works with you to remind you of a trigger. And then when you couple that again with the memory, then an anchor is created. And uh, you immediately, it's like on autopilot, you smell the popcorn and you automatically remember <clears throat> childhood evenings watching a movie and um, and just my, the love of my mom and dad and the safety of that home. But then of course there's also negative triggers. And uh, I know some of us who are here, we have been through a lot of childhood um, trauma. And so sometimes if, um, 
you know, if certain things happen, have happened to you right before your abuse occurred, um, then that will also trigger you in a negative way, in the exact same way as a positive. So just imagine that most of the things that we experience, okay, is it's really about the past. It's not even about the present. And we, we all have these gestalts, which are bags of emotion, and we should have the ability to regulate those, right? Go up and down and regulate them. It's um, sadness, anger, fear, and guilt. But what happens is that most of us uh, don't have the ability to regulate our emotions. Um, our parents surely didn't have the ability to regulate their emotions. And I think about it, our parents' parents, they, they were in survival mode. I mean, my mom and dad, I'm thinking about my dad specifically, his father and mother, they lived, they, they, they lived on a tobacco farm. They literally had children so that they could have free farm hands. That's all it was. My dad didn't brush his teeth until he was 12 years old. His clothes were made of burlap sacks that the rice and the beans were delivered to their farm in. And so you think anybody was around there worrying about what they got triggered? Nope. They got beat and, you know, um, lucky if they got probably two meals a day their house was freezing i mean they were absolutely fight or flight oh nothing but survival in them completely dependent on the rain for their crops and then you know they were in appomattox virginia and it was just a freezing cold the winters and and their house you could literally go there we've gone there before you could see holes th through the through the pieces of wood in their house and and so they they can um those people uh, especially back then, and you know, we're only two generations away from them. We, um, we, we, we were, they taught their kids and, and then those kids are our parents and they taught us that there's not really much we can do about our emotions. And when our gestalts get filled up with those negative emotions, there's two things and only two things that can happen. Either one, you get sick, or number two, you revert back to the age when your gestalt first got filled up. So I always think about and always demonstrate this with road rage. So imagine you're 40 years old and someone cuts you off in traffic and you go off the handle and, you know, you start cussing them out. And, you know, some people, my goodness, even shoot people because of stuff like that. That's not an appropriate response to getting cut off in traffic. But when their anger um, gestalt first got filled up into rage, they may have been two to four years old. And so they're reverting back to um, uh, exhibit behaviors that a typical two to four year old would. So that's why it makes no sense, road rage. And so that, that is literally how our subconscious mind works. And um, again, when this, the gestalt for sadness fills up and spills over, it goes into depression. So if you're wondering why you're depressed all the time and you're on antidepressants, well, guess what? Antidepressants are, yeah, they'll fix some of the symptoms and maybe some of the mood swings that you have, but until you get that whole gestalt emptied down, you are literally um, fixing a problem that's that's 30 years, like that, you know, the problem is 30 years in the making and all you're doing is fixing this one little tiny emotion and symptom down here 30 years later. What did it, did it do anything over here? Is that gestalt emptied at all? No. So you can take antidepressants and you will for the rest of your life. And I know a lot of people that are anti-doctor. Of course, I'm not anti-doctor because I am a doctor, but I, I am anti-pharma. But people, a lot of people that are anti-doctors are they say, well, doctors don't want you to get healthy because they want to make money off you for the rest of their life. That's really not what we're trying to do. We only know how to do this thing. We don't know how to feel. We don't know how to um, empty the reticular activating system and all the gestalts. All we know how to do is fix this symptom 30 years down the line. And so, of course, you're going to be addicted to that and dependent on that for the rest of your life because as doctors, that's the only thing that we ever had research on to show us how to fix is something way down here and prevent suicide and things like that. But the initial problem, the initiating event that calls it all never got touched. It'll still be there rearing its ugly head, wreaking its habit on your life for the rest of your life until you get it fixed. So that's if you feel like you're sad all the time and it's spilling over into depression. The other gestalt is anger. How many of us feel rage? So when, ang when the gestalt of anger gets um, uh, overfilled, it turns into rage. And if you, if you are having a hard time uh, controlling your emotions and triggers will just like make you just like rage and scream at your kids and your partner, well, that's a really good sign that you need to do some work on your subconscious. The other gestalt is fear. And when the fear um, gets, when you've been fearful of things your whole entire life, 
um, then when it when it spills over, it goes into anxiety. And you know, how many of us are on anti-anxiety medicines? I think the um, the last statistic I heard is that. 27 to 37 percent of Americans were on anti-anxiety medicines, and so many people misuse those too, and and so that that's another one. And then the fourth one, the fourth gestalt is guilt, and when we keep feeling guilt, when that when that gestalt has gotten filled up, then we go into shame. And so, if you have any of these things, guys, your trauma is actually stored at a cellular level. It's stored everywhere over our body. I mean, you just look at your body and just imagine. The effect of that trauma is on every single inch of your body. So you can expect dis-ease. You can expect sickness if you do not deal with your subconscious mind. And when you get triggered, your gestalts will just immediately fire off the amygdala and you go into rage or depression or anxiety or shame or or you're going to get sick. So if you're um, always sad and your triggers are the ones that are are making you lash out in ways that are things that you are just so so um uh unproud of things that you do in your life just know that means that you need to do work on your subconscious mind and uh also i just want you to know that the trauma and the abuse that you can deal with as a child can be in several different forms it can be physical abuse emotional abuse financial abuse and if you're having a hard time accepting help because you think someone's trying to control you that's another reason that you can you can know that a trigger is live and act and active in your life so i do this work so that no one else has to go through the 37 years of what i've gone through um, my abuse occurred to me when I was 14 years old um, at the hands of my brother's friends. I was left alone in, um, in my house with, I was 14 and my brother and all of his friends were 19. And I, um, once I, my, my parents were partying up the street with some of their friends and um, my brother was allowed to have um, parties whenever he wanted to. And there were drugs, of course, I didn't know what they were at the time, but now I know they were um cocaine and uh, marijuana and alcohol and cigarettes. So there were four drugs in my house all the time. And I was 14 and when I would go to sleep, um, these 19 year old boys that were under the influence of one or all four of those drugs would come into my room and and touch me um, in places that no little boy should be, no young man should be touching a little girl. And I never knew how to, how to say anything about it. And I always tell people that, that that trauma, yeah, that's what happened to me over and over again, probably from ages 14 to 16. I can't really remember when it stopped, but I never had the ability to tell anybody what was going on. So I just took it and I shut up and I shoved it down. And, and I always say that that's not the trauma that happened to me. The trauma is what, what happened, what, what I let that make myself think about myself for the rest of my life and, and how I just, I just lived like I was, I was a, I was prey. I was just like at at the whim of my triggers for 37 years, from ages 14 to age 50. I finally got got the ability and finally found the tools to to heal that crap once and for all. And I stopped hurting people because hurt people hurt people. And until you know better, you're just kind of like you're just. Um, a slave to your triggers and so I just want you to know that no one is going to walk around on eggshells for you so that they don't trigger you and you have to go inward and find your healing so that you can get your power back and power is, is power is one thing and one thing only and that is the ability to act and I talk about that I think in live number three and so what my program does is give you the power to act and to stop uh, being a slave to those triggers and start living your life in a different way you cannot have full control over your body while you are just full of triggers otherwise think about it anything that goes on in your life is going to be able to control you some loud noise uh, someone tell you knew that you can't afford something um people you know touching you you know uh, on your thigh that that triggers me still to this day i mean it's just like you know this knee-jerk reaction because i know uh, what comes after that you, you know you i mean not to this day anymore because i've worked through it but for 37 years and so your life is to be lived and triggers ruin that so the only way you're going to get rid of your triggers is to clear out your reticular activating system. Then and only then you're going to be able to have a deep, meaningful relationship with yourself. And you're going to have conversations with yourself so that you actually fall in love with yourself. And you have an active conversation going on with all of your inner children that 
had the different abuse happen to them and you're going to be able to resource them and give them protection now once and for all and once that once you get that healing no one can take it away from you because it's between you and you and and it's it no one else gave you that healing you did it for yourself and you're going to for the rest of your life have the tools to be able to resource yourself on the spot and not be a slave to those triggers when you um fix your subconscious mind you actually stop living the distorted version of the truth that matches with your unique version of the screwed up and messed up parental and societal and um and um and educational programming okay and then once you clear and heal what's been stored in here you're now um you're 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 getting to run your own life your triggers aren't going to be running your life anymore and you know i just want you to know that you'll never have to be um lashing out at people ever again you are your own responsibility and, and you don't have to do that anymore so once you do that um you will know that you you actually can have awareness of what's going on in your life and you don't have to like will yourself to death in your life you can only will yourself and effort yourself so long until you wear out and you know god help you if you get sick or if you lose a job or lose a relationship you know um your your will and, and your ability to effort it will will just completely get obliterated and you'll get sick or you know worse yet you'll ruin a relationship and I think about it, you know, the amount of money that some of us would give to have a relationship restored, whether it's one with your mom and dad or one of your sisters or your brothers or, you know, the father of your children, you know, that's priceless to be able to get those back. And you would do anything for that, pay anything. Most of us here in this group are, are here because we have been through some sort of healing for like 10 or 15 years and we're just not getting where we want to in our lives and we're so sick and tired of being sick and tired and you know now you know why you haven't had full healing because if you're just trying to i think about it this way if you're just trying to fix your problems with your conscious mind that's about four percent of the picture the other 96 percent is your subconscious mind and if all you're trying to do is effort yourself away and and um, I know myself, I have, um, I have some very uh, challenging relationships in my life and, uh, and I, will, I will try to effort myself. I have in, in the past, I've tried to effort myself away. I'll watch a, a certain YouTube uh, video, sometimes like 10 and 20 times, trying to make things different in my life and it never gets better until you heal yourself. And once you give yourself permission to heal, then you're going to live your life from a place where you have choice and you don't have to let your emotions rule your life anymore. And, and if you have emotions coming up in your life right now, I want you to know that's great and wonderful. And you can go back to that meditation for the first nine minutes of this live today and try to release those emotions. So many of us say, don't, don't feel the emotions, just get busy. Just keep yourself busy. Oh, focus on the good things. Yeah, there's a time to focus on the good things, but you also really need to just like sit in the crap. Sit in the crap of your life and deal with those emotions. Resource the inner children that were hurt. And, and then and only then will you be at a place where you yourself are resourced on such a deep level that, that you're healthy, whole, and healed. So that you give your best self forward and then you can have real authentic relationships again. And it's just a wonderful thing. And people start falling off of your life. Um, I know that's, that, that's happened to me and it's happening to me. And it's really sad that certain people that have been such a big part of my life are falling off of my life now. But it's necessary. Um, you, you, once you have this level of um, consciousness, if other people are just living in the past, you, you just you can't tolerate them anymore. And, and I, I feel like that we are all right here, right now, alive on planet Earth at this particular time in 2021 and meeting each other here because we're the chosen ones. We have this awareness and this desire to do better than anybody else in our past ever did. And we want to live this life of, of change and purpose. And the only way you're going to do it is diving into the muck, dealing with the crappy stuff. And then, like, like I said in my, in my clearing and in my meditation this morning, it turns into its component parts. And it just like, I don't know, this is how I see it. It just like, 
you know, that sadness and, and that crying, you think the crying is never going to end and you're just like crying your eyes out. One of my clients right now literally feels stuff coming out of the back of her head, just debilitating sadness, just pouring out of the back of her head. And then you let yourself feel that you find the version of you that were hurt and then kind of just like pulverizes and vaporizes into its component parts and you realize, wow, it's gone now. And once it's down to its component parts and you realize you have these little tiny pixel component parts here at the end and then you can build yourself back up again. So I want you to know that um, there's a continuum of people that can work with me, okay? And if you're not ready to um, invest the time and the money and the effort into yourself, then you're not ready. But if you're ready to invest time in healing yourself, and I always say it's expensive and the, the biggest expense is time. It's also some money, but people have spent four and five and six figures, I do believe, getting out of terrible relationships that have damaged them. Uh, lost income because of uh, they were so screwed up that they couldn't give themselves, um, you know, for, for, weeks and weeks sometimes months at a time they're just laying in bed unable to get out of the bed and so your inner children are, are wanting you to get healing the whole entire life is here all this life around you all the people places things and events the wonderful things are, are here for the taking and everything you've been through again has, has brought you right here right now for a reason and if you don't get healing then it's almost like all that trauma you went through was for nothing so I want you to, I, it's, my, it's my desire that you live your best life. I'm bringing the tools to you that it's taken me, again, 37 years to finally find the tools that finally brought true healing for me. And, and, and my clients, they're, they are just, um, I'll have some of them, I'm going to be over the next couple of weeks um, interviewing some of my graduates from my program. And I just wanted them to tell you with their own words where they were before what they went through during my program and where they are now. And you're gonna see the kind of healing that, that is possible. And, and I just want you to know that you, you, it, you are, it is not your fault if you feel like you are gonna to have to be anxious and depressed for the rest of your life. If you feel like you're gonna be sitting on a, a, a counselor's couch for the rest of your life once a week. If you're gonna be on medicines for the rest of your life. If you're sick and tired of thinking that you're gonna to have to live by others' rules because you don't even know how to trust yourself then just book a call with us and we'll see if you're ready. And if you're ready to commit the time for yourself, that the best version of your life possible ever imaginable is waiting for you on the other side. And it would be my honor and my team's honor to usher you through that healing journey. So anyway, um, it's been my pleasure being here today talking to you about triggers. And next week I'm gonna be talking about boundaries. And so I'll see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. Again, go to therealdrcindy.com for more information. And um, coming soon, again, I'll be, I'll be interviewing some of my past clients. I love you guys, and I hope you have the best day. See you next Tuesday at 2. Take care.